XPage design list in my customer's application. Currently, there are no X pages. I can create a new X page and call it customers by name X page. And I could add, as Howard showed us, um, a data source, like a domino view data source at this time, or I can add it by adding a view control. And I'm going to go with that latter approach. So no data source, just creating an, uh, an X page and giving it a name. By the way, uh, questions earlier on, you know, can you have spaces in your X page name? Uh, no, you cannot. Uh, can you define an alias? No, you cannot. Okay, so here's my new customers by name X page. And if I take a look at the outline, I see there's not a lot to it. When I select um, the X page element in my outline and switch to the source, you know, right now there's not a lot in my uh, source XML, just the tag for the overall X page, the XP view tag. Okay, so back to my design WYSIWYG interface. And I'm going to add a view control. So in my controls palette on the right, in my container controls, just dragging and dropping a view control. And I'm interrupted with this dialog, and I specify that I want a domino view data source uh, for a view in the current or another database. It's going to be in the current customer NSF database. And then choose the customer by name view. At this point, I can deselect that sales order lookup column. Don't need to display that in my XPage application. And OK to create my view control. So I have this new view control and just the columns that I chose to display in it. And if I quickly jump over to the source, I can see that that's expanded some. And Control Shift Function F to reformat that. And I can see. Um, the controls that make up my view control, starting at the XP view panel tag and ending at the end XP view panel tag. So back into design mode. With my view control selected in my outline view, I can see the properties for that. And this is where I might set the overall width for my view panel. Um, or I might do that on a column by column basis. I think I'll do it later on on a column by column basis. And there is a uh, property here at runtime open selected documents using. And this is where um, I'm going to name the next X page that I'm going to create, the one to display the Domino documents. If I look at some of the other properties on the data panel, I can see that this view control is bound to a Domino view in the current database, specifically, specifically the customer by name view. And on the display panel, uh, some display options like showing or not showing the column headers, uh, show a pager in the uh, header. I think I'll show a, a pager in the footer. And I'm seeing, you know, as I select or deselect that, it's actually being added or removed uh, right from my uh, WYSIWYG design editor. Uh, and I could uh, also on the display tab uh, set you know the maximum rows per page to 15. I've got a, a limited uh, set of uh, documents that I'm using, so we'll go with with 15 instead of the default 30. And let's preview that. And I'll preview with a browser. And here in my Firefox browser, I'm seeing my view, my customer by name view, and I can page through this using the pager at the top or at the bottom. And I don't know if you're noticing, but you know, as I do page through this, there's some sort of a, a jiggle happening between these columns. And that's because you know, when you add or the columns in a view control will take on the default behavior that you're familiar with in your, your Domino web application development, and that is to expand or collapse to the actual contents of the column. So I'm going to want to address that when I set the properties for the column. I can set the width for each of those columns. So let's go on to taking a look at some of our properties.
So I'll return to, to uh, the presentation for a couple of slides. Uh, you can set the properties for um, your various elements that make up your view control, like your pagers, your column headers, and so on. So this screen is showing us uh, the pager control selected and the properties for that pager control. And one of the properties is which pager style you want to use. Currently, sample one is selected on this, this screen. And this screen is just showing us what the various sample styles are. Pager sample one and two and three. So quite a few, up to seven different pre-existing styles. Or you can create your own custom pager style by selecting custom here. And then through this interface, adding in you know, which components you want and in what order you want to create your custom pager. This screen is showing us a column header selected. So in the properties view, we can see the properties for that column header. And that's where you might set the width or you might check off uh, this option, sort column here, to basically provide the user with the ability to click on that column header to sort in ascending or descending uh, mode. And uh, to enable this option, uh, the underlying column in the Domino View data source must also be sortable. This screen is showing the customer column uh, selected uh, in the design editor and in the outline view, and of course the properties. And this is where you might set the width for your properties to avoid that jiggle as you're paging or as your users are paging uh, through the various pages of the view. This screen is just showing some um, other operations that you can pre perform with view columns. You can move your columns, you can arrange them uh, right in the outline view, uh, or you can right click on a view column in the outline view, or in the editor to either delete it or insert a column before or append a column. So let's take a look at some of those properties in Designer. And we'll start with our pager. So I've selected the pager at the top, and I'm seeing the properties for that pager control, and it's set to the default sample one. So I'm going to select my pager at the bottom and maybe go with something a little different. Let's try sample three. So we get uh, a different a set of controls within that pager control to navigate through the various pages. And if I don't like any of the existing, I can create my own custom pager. And I can begin to add through this interface, you know, which controls I want on that pager. Okay, and I can reorder these or delete these and so on. So I can create my own custom pager or use one of the existing samples. I'll just return uh, the bottom pager to sample six so that um, I do have some distinction between my two pagers. Now, let's see what properties we can set on the column header. So I've selected my customer column header, header and this is where I might want to uh, sort or provide that sort capability by selecting this option. And in fact, I'm going to do that for all of my columns. I'm going to allow them to sort by clicking on the city and the column and the contact uh, column and the phone. Well, I guess I can't do that. So um, it must be that the underlying view, let's revisit that underlying view, the customer by name view. And I can see that um, sorting is enabled uh, for some of these columns, but not for that phone column. And that's why I can't do it in the XPage design. OK, selecting uh, my actual uh, data customer column where my documents are displayed and uh, this is where I might set the width um, in this case in pixels to 200. I want to avoid that jiggle as my users are paging through the content uh, so I'm going to set the width for all of these to some value and this might take a little bit of testing to optimize this but we'll go with this sort of an arrangement. And let's test that out. So um, this time I'll actually uh, preview in notes. Oh, 
Okay, so seeing the same uh, view control, um, this time in notes, and I can page through the content using my pager at the top. Got a different, this is sample pager six at the bottom, so I can use that. And I am seeing that I have to, to some degree, um, and maybe quite well, address that jiggle. It doesn't appear to be jiggling. It's certainly not as much as it was uh, previously as I'm paging through my content. Also, uh, the customer column is sortable in ascending or descending order, same with the city column and so on. So that's how that works. So let's return to our design. Actually, um, that ends our lesson on displaying a domino view. So let's return to the actual lessons database. So we just went through uh, the display of Domino View on an X page. There is an activity, and we are going to queue all of the activities until the end, or you can perform these after the webinar. Uh, but just to preview what you're going to be doing in this activity, basically similar to what I showed you, you're going to create um, this type of a X page to display. Uh, the customers by name view in a view control. Okay, and you're going to have a pager control and so on. Okay, so I'm going to go on to the next part of my design, and that is, you know, how do I display those existing documents? And what we're seeing on my screen right now is an X page um, that, much like a form design, um, has a, a table for, for some sort of an alignment. I've got some labels for what appear to be fields. Uh, in X speak, uh, these aren't fields. These are actually controls, um, input controls, uh, edit box controls, uh, uh, combo box controls, and so on. We've seen this slide before, so we're working on this part of the design, you know, how do you display, you know, the contents of the field. Uh, so, uh, once again, X, page, X pages, they own the presentation layer, uh, so our form is actually uh, relegated to, you know, just defining that data source. So, to define a domino document data source, you actually indicate or specify you know, which form, which form, uh, uh, basically the fields on the form, the form is basically providing a data schema, which fields to present in that domino document data source. So there are two ways to do it. Once again, you can add your data source at the time you create an X page and then specify the form, okay, really what collection of fields you want in that data source. Or you can create an X page and at any time go to the data panel for the X page properties and add a domino document data source and specify once again um, the form uh, to use either in the current or some other, any other uh, application that's available. Now, there are two approaches to adding those input controls. Uh, one is a two-step process where you add the appropriate control. Uh, what we're seeing in this screen is an edit box control that was added uh, to input the phone number. And then what you, the second part of the process, or the second step, is to bind that control to a field in your Domino document data source, in this case, the phone field. Thank you.